So after identifying some problems in the previous design, I've decided to redesign this block, fixing all those problems, and the result is something I'm really happy with. So let's take a closer look. All right, so this is the 3D printed and assembled power unit. And I'm really pleased with how this turned out and the design overall, mainly because one of the challenges I faced before was that the the unit was just too big, right? It was, it was larger this way. It was about the same uh, width but there was a lot of floor space that was being taken up and I need that free for other parts of the design. Uh, a good example of that is down here. So if I show you it from this kind of angle, you can see it's got this kind of V design, but like kind of like an engine, I guess, which means that I've got space free either end of the unit. And that's pretty important because um, this is gonna be four wheel drive and ultimately I want this to drop in at the front and the back. So I'm going to have the bell crank steering mechanism is going to be right here. And ideally that operates fairly close to the axles or as close as they can be um, to optimize the performance of the steering. So that's going to be moving right underneath here, which is one of the reasons why I have increased the height of the motors. Now the only real immediate downside I can see to that is your center of gravity so these are higher up um, they tend to be mounted lower on most RC cars to bring your center of gravity down but designing something like this is different it's new I haven't seen something like this before so there are gonna have to be some sacrifices in certain areas I don't think it's gonna be a huge issue because I've got other components like the four ESC's a huge 6S battery which are all gonna be on the base plate of the car which should help bring that center of gravity down but in, in terms of the mechanical sort of elements of it, I've got six bearings in this design. So there's one here under this uh, cover. There's one behind here as well for each side of the gear, for each shaft. And there's one in here, which is part of the pinion to stop the pinion uh, moving and trying to deliver as much torque as I can out through the wheels. The bearings work really smoothly. You, know, you can spin them quite freely. You can actually hear them as well. Most of the noise actually comes from the bearings when it's running, it's spinning so fast you can hear the bearings. It's just common, you know, it's friction, that's what's gonna happen. Uh, same on the other side. But you can really see how that torque's gonna work there. And we should have a lot of power here at the output. The good thing about this design as well is there's a lot of room to add things. You know, that I can just literally pull a shock tower straight over here, which is ideal. So I can have a shock tower that comes out and that sets me up nicely here for my springs with the suspension arms um, and I think it's going to be relatively straightforward. I've also got a lot of room here to add uh, my Hall Effect sensors which I'm going to need. Uh, they can also be mounted underneath. We've got space underneath to route cables. I think it's pretty much perfect for what I want. So another approach that I'm taking is belt drive. So this is something I want to play around with. It's not quite ready to be tested. There's a few things I need to think about first, uh, but I think this is going to work. As you can see, it's the same design as before. Uh, it's, it's, it's literally the base is exactly the same. The only difference is we, we've got more length this way, which again isn't a huge issue. So if I show you my version one design, I've got this. Um, you can see the, the space here, the space this way is free. Uh, the, the only thing we need to be careful of is coming this way because we're limiting our suspension travel. So I'm trying to keep that in mind while I design this. But you can see there's nothing really here. There's nothing this end. There's nothing really this end aside from the base, which has the, um, the bell crank steering, which is again why I've created this kind of elevated design to keep that base plate free underneath. So what I'm thinking to make this work, I'm definitely going to need some kind of belt tensioner. I designed these pulleys in Fusion 360. So one of the problems with this design at the moment is the fact that I don't have a tensioner on there. So the problem we have is, because uh, of the large gear ratio, so we've got 5 to 1, what happens is the contact area here between the pinion pulley uh, and the belt is very low. So what tends to happen is skipping. So if I rotate this. You can see it's just skipping around the small pinion. Now, 
that's just due to that small contact area and the large angle here off the spur pulley. So one of the things I can do there is add a tensioner or some kind of roller here like this, which will wrap the belt around the small pulley. So I haven't thought too much about that yet, uh, which is why this isn't a demo just yet, but it's certainly not something I'm giving up on. Uh, all I really want is, you know, I could even just have a bolt that comes out from the back and have something that slides over it that can just freely spin around the bolt. Uh, but ideally I do want to also be able to adjust the tension uh, so I can set that up properly. I think with a gearing system like this, you're going to get a lot less noise but again you always get skipping with belts and you do lose that sort of instantaneous torque which i do love the idea of especially with this four-wheel drive approach if you guys have any suggestions uh, on how i can improve this or other ideas that maybe i haven't thought about leave them in the comments below i always read the comments i appreciate the feedback and it really helps me learn and improve my design. So uh, thanks for that. In terms of what's next, uh, I'm gonna be working on the rest of the subframe. So I'm pretty happy with this as a test block. It works, it's powerful, and now I just need a car, right? So I've gotta design the rest of it. I'm gonna work on the suspension arms. I'm gonna do a shock tower up here somewhere. Possibly adding my sensor mount as well. And ultimately just start designing the subframe. Uh, the front is gonna be pretty much same as version one, it's gonna be a duplicate of this, obviously with the addition of the steering system. But it should be relatively straightforward once I've got one subframe designed. And yeah, I'll keep you updated. That's it for this one. Hopefully you found it useful. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.